Ever since I found out that Bill Gates has a $154 million smart house, or is that a smart mansion that knows who's in each room and automatically adjusts the lighting and temperature based on that person's individual preference, I knew I needed that. The problem is that I don't have $154 million, but I do have Home Assistant and a bunch of these ESP32 mini devices which cost less than $10 each and I've recently learned how to use them to create these same sort of automations in my own home. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an open source application called ES Presence to detect who is in what room of your house. And then I'll show you how you can use this information in your Home Assistant automations. And it's not just limited to detecting people either. You can use this same setup to find out what room your dog or cat is in, or where you left your keys, wallet, or backpack. This really does unlock a huge potential for taking your smart home to the next level. Let's take a look. Hey home automation guy, start the show. Before we look at setting this up, let's first go over what ES Presence is and how it works. ES Presence is an open source system that measures the strength of Bluetooth signals from smart devices in order to determine how far away they are. If you have two rooms, each with an ES Presence base station, it can work out which of them is closest to a Bluetooth device and use it to infer which room that device is in. A lot of people have a Bluetooth device on them almost all of the time, be it a mobile phone, a smartwatch, or a tile or other Bluetooth beacon. And each of these Bluetooth devices have a different serial number or MAC address, which can be used to uniquely identify them. This means that you can put a small ESP32 device in each of the rooms you care about and tell it which Bluetooth devices you're interested in tracking. It will then be able to figure out which room it thinks that device is in and we'll pass this information over to Home Assistant so that you can use it in your automations. I thought it would be quite difficult to get this set up and running. This ESP32 thing looks pretty daunting and I assumed that I would need to do all sorts of firmware flashing and coding to get it to work properly. But boy was I wrong, it turned out to be a piece of piss. Before you get started, you're going to need a few things. Firstly, you'll need a working Home Assistant setup with an MQTT broker connected to it. If you don't know what MQTT is, or you don't have an MQTT broker set up, you should check out a video I did about this, which I've linked in the description below. You're also going to need some compatible ESP32 devices. I got mine on Amazon in a pack of four for under $30. If you go to the ES Presence website, which I've also linked in the description below, you can find a list of all the devices that are compatible and links as to where to buy them. You'll also need some USB cables that fit into the port on the ESP32 and a power adapter to charge them. I'm just using some old USB cables that I've gotten with almost every device I've bought over the years and an old mobile phone charger. Finally, you'll need some compatible devices to track, which are known as beacons. They're called that because they beacon out a Bluetooth signal on a regular basis, which ES Presence uses to track how far away the device is. I initially hoped that I could use my Fitbit tracker for this because both my partner and I almost always wear them and they use Bluetooth to talk to our phones. I saw someone else on YouTube use their Fitbit for this, so I just automatically assumed that this was possible. Cheers, Lewis. Unfortunately, Fitbits stop broadcasting their Bluetooth beacons once they're paired to your phone to save battery and increase your privacy, which makes a ton of sense. What I should have done is go to the ES Presence website first and look at all of the supported beacons. It looks like some wearable devices like the Apple Watch and the Xiaomi My Band are supported, but Fitbits definitely are not. I ended up using our Android phones as trackers because whilst we don't always have them with us, it's good enough for the use cases that I have. You can also use tiles or other Bluetooth beacons, which you can attach to your keys, wallet, pets, and bags so that your smart home can help you find them. Now that you have everything you need, it's time to grab a drink, plug your ESP device into your computer via the USB cable, and go to the ES Presence website in either the Chrome or Edge browser. Then go to the installation section and firmware. The ES Presence website has a really cool browser-based flashing utility built into it that lets you push the ES Presence application directly onto your ESP32 device from within the browser. Not all browsers support this, which is why I recommend using Chrome or Edge. Pick your device type from the drop-down list here, in my case just a generic ESP32 device, and click Connect. Chrome will pop up asking you what device you want to install this on. If you don't see any devices on the list, Follow the instructions here to install the right drivers for your USB serial device. I downloaded and extracted the drivers from the zip file. Then I opened up Device Manager and saw the unrecognized device in the list. I was able to right click on that to update the firmware, point it to the extracted drivers, and once they were installed, Chrome was able to detect my USB device. 
If yours doesn't get detected, try unplugging it and replugging it back in after you've installed the drivers. So now we go back to installing the firmware. In the pop-up, you should now be able to click the right device and install ES Presence. The installation wizard is pretty straightforward. I selected to erase everything on my device to start with a clean slate. After a few minutes, I had ES Presence running on my device. This device immediately starts broadcasting a new wireless network SSID called ES Presence and some random characters. I connected to that wireless network on my mobile phone and immediately brought up the ES Presence configuration page. You could just as easily do this from a laptop or any other device that has Wi-Fi capabilities. If you're not taken to the configuration page automatically, you can navigate to 192.168.4.1 in your browser and it should take you there. In the configuration page, I enter the details for my Wi-Fi network, the name of the room I'm going to put the device into, and the details for my MQTT broker. I find it best if you make the room names the same as the areas you already have configured in Home Assistant. I slightly changed the way I spelled one of my rooms and it duplicated it in Home Assistant, which meant I then had to go in and delete it. I pretty much leave everything else as the defaults. I do, however, make sure that I turn off the status LED as it blinks all the time and is crazy bright. I then restarted the device and it's set up. You should almost immediately see it listed in Home Assistant as an ES Presence device. This gives you the basic statistics and some control over it. You can even use the visit device link up here to take you back to the ES Presence configuration screen. Now you have an ES Presence base station set up. You can repeat these steps again and again for each device you want to put in a different room. Just make sure that you know which device is for which room or it can get really confusing. Now that you've got those set up, you need to set up the Bluetooth beacon devices that you're going to track. The easiest way I found to do this was to take my laptop, the ESP32, and the Bluetooth device I wanted to track into a room that had very few other Bluetooth devices in it. This was harder than I thought. I then plugged the ESP device back into the laptop and went to the ES Presence website and to the web terminal that is part of the troubleshooting section. This reads the output from your ESP32 and displays it inside your browser. It is by far the easiest way to troubleshoot what's going on with your device and it also lets you find the Bluetooth devices that you want to track. Click connect on the terminal and select the right device from your list again, and then press the reset button on the ESP32. You should see it booting up and connecting to your Wi-Fi network. You'll now also start seeing any new Bluetooth devices that are in range. If you bring the device you want to track real close to it, you should see it say that the device is close by. Copy the MAC address and the device ID for the device that you want to track. If you're going to track a mobile phone like I am, in this case an Android phone, you will need to use a special feature in the Home Assistant mobile application to make this work. I had to open up the Home Assistant app, go to settings and then to companion app. In here I had to scroll down to sensors and then to the BLE transmitter option under the Bluetooth heading. Here I turned on the BLE transmitter and made a note of the UUID listed at the bottom. This makes my Android phone send out these special Bluetooth BLE beacon announcements, which I can now see in my ES Presence terminal with the same UUID that was listed in the app. It's worth pointing out that this will shorten my battery life, but so far I've not noticed it having a big impact. If you're using an iPhone or an Apple Watch or any other device, you may need to do similar things to get them to send out the right beacons. All the instructions are linked from the beacon section of the ES Presence website. So now we've got our Bluetooth device ID, we need to create a sensor in Home Assistant for this device. This sensor will get updated when the device moves between rooms. To create a sensor, open up VS Code, the file editor add-on, or whatever you use to edit your Home Assistant configuration.yaml file. Scroll down until you find your sensor key. If you don't have one, you might need to create one by typing sensor and then a colon. Go back to the ES Presence website and click on the Home Assistant under the configuration menu. All the instructions that I'm giving you in this video can be found on the ES Presence website, so go check that out if you run into any problems. In the Home Assistant section, copy out the code block under the Beacon section like this, and then paste it back into your configuration.yaml file underneath the sensors area. Make sure that you indent it correctly. We need to paste in the device ID that you recorded earlier into the device ID section. Then also give it a name. This is the name that will appear in Home Assistant, so choose wisely. I also like to change the timeout value from 60 down to 5. If you leave it at 60, it will take a whole minute for it to realize you've moved to a different room, which was too long in my testing. If you set it too short, you might find the device flip-flopping between rooms when it's sitting perfectly still, but we'll talk about that in a bit. 
you'll need to add a sensor entry for every Bluetooth device that you want to track. So repeat these steps as necessary and then save the file. As you've changed the configuration file, you'll need to restart Home Assistant. After the restart, you should see a new entity in Home Assistant with the name that you gave it in the configuration file, and it should have a value of the room that your device is currently in. I found that ES Presence worked okay-ish out of the box, but I had some niggling issues with it detecting me in the wrong rooms, or marking me as not home, which it does when it can no longer detect your Bluetooth device. I'm going to now share with you some things I did to make it more reliable and accurate. You'll need to play with this in your own home, because every house will behave differently based on how much stuff you have in it, your floor plan, what your walls are made of, and the type of beacon that you're using. The first tip I have is the placement of the ESP devices themselves. Try and put them as close as possible to the place you normally are when you're in that room. In my living room, I put the device near the sofa. In our offices, I put it near the desk. And in the bedroom, well, I put it behind the headboard of the bed. Also make sure that these base stations are not close to each other on the other side of a wall or the floor. I initially had some problems with it detecting me in rooms upstairs because the base station was on the floor directly above me, which it was detecting as a stronger signal than the base station on the other side of my office. My second tip is to play with the maximum distances to report in the ES Presence configuration page. This will need to be adjusted for each room and involves some very unscientific walking around with your phone. Firstly, Open up your device sensor on your mobile app, click the attributes section to show the distance attribute. This shows you how far away from the base station ES Presence think you are. Then walk around the edges of the room to find out what the maximum reported distance is for your room. Then go into the ES Presence configuration page for that base station and add that value into the maximum distance to report box under filtering. This means that ES Presence will only report devices as being in that room if it's less than that distance, so hopefully it won't pick up any devices in any other rooms. You'll need to repeat this for any rooms you have reporting issues with. Finally, if you're using the Android Home Assistant app like I am, you can play with the beacon signal strength in the BLE transmitter section in the sensors area. The higher you make this, the more battery this will use, but it may make your detection work better, or worse. All of these calibration settings will be different in your own home, so you'll need to play with it over time until you find the settings that work best for you. Finally, let's take a quick look at how you can use this in your Home Assistant automations. Here's a simple automation that turns on the lights and plays my Spotify on my office speaker when I come into my office. It's triggered when my Android sensor changes its state to Alan's office. It then checks to make sure guest mode isn't on. My office is also our spare bedroom. I don't want the lights to come on and my music to start playing if ES Presence mistakenly thinks that I'm in the office in the middle of the night whilst we've got someone staying over. It then runs a simple action to turn on the lights and play Spotify on my speaker using the Spotcast integration. I have another automation that does this in reverse to turn off the lights and the music when I leave the room. It once again uses the Android sensor to trigger the automation when the state changes from Alan's office to anything else. I check for guest mode once again and then call the light.turnoff service and the mediaplayer.stop service to turn off the lights and the music. By playing around with the triggers, conditions, and actions, you can create any number of automations. If you've got a smart thermostat and smart lighting, you could very easily do all the things that Bill Gates' $150 million smart mansion can do, and for under 100 bucks. Having your house know who is in what room unlocks a huge amount of automation potential. And now that I've got all this set up, I'll be doing a lot of experimenting and testing. So expect a few videos in the future showing you what kind of presence-based automations I've come up with. If this is the kind of thing that you want to learn more about, then make sure you've clicked that subscribe button so that together we can make your home smarter.